Batman, what do we do? We try not to die. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and the trailer for The Flash gave us our first look at Michael Keaton's return as Batman. Yeah. I'm Batman. So, we're gonna break down exactly what Keaton's role will be in this film, and what his Batman has been up to for all of these years. What other villains did he face? Did he ever have a Robin? Did he ever have kids? And what tragic event led to him hanging up the cape and cow and becoming the reclusive and defeated looking Bruce Wayne that we saw a glimpse of in this trailer? But to answer all of those questions and more, we gotta start with some history. Michael Keaton's Batman was the second Batman to grace the big screen in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman. Second Batman? I thought Keaton was the first big screen Batman. Well, actually, buddy, Adam West's Batman movie got a theatrical release in 1966. But to be fair, Keaton's Batman was really the first gritty and more realistic superhero movie. It was the first of its kind. I don't know, man. Superman the movie had Superman like yelling and being really sad about Lois dying. That's some pretty hard stuff. Very true. Up for debate. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What was the first gritty superhero film? Now the film's villain was the Joker portrayed by Jack Nicholson. And despite a little corniness here and there, Batman still holds up over 30 years later. And the same can be said for its sequel, Batman Returns, which came out in 1992. This one gave us Danny DeVito as Oswald Cobblepot, the Penguin. And before she was the MCU's Janet Van Dyne, Michelle Pfeiffer brilliantly portrayed Selina Kyle's Catwoman. <sighs> Meow. Now, we think that Selina Kyle will have played a major role in Keaton's Batman's unknown history, and we think we may even hear her mentioned in The Flash, but more on that in just a bit. Now, following Keaton's two Batman films, we got the infamous Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. These films are kind of sort of part of Keaton's universe, but at the same time, they're not. Batman Forever saw Val Kilmer take up the cape and cow, and Batman and Robin had bat nipples himself, George Clooney. Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. These film's villains were Jim Carrey's Riddler, Tommy Lee Jones' Two-Face, Uma Thurman's Poison Ivy, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze, and they even had a Bane. <laughs> Now, the characters that connect all of these films together are Alfred and Commissioner Gordon, who were played by the same actors in all four films. He gave us a signal. I'll cancel the pizza. Now, had these films not been so mixed and off-tone, they probably would have been welcomed with open arms as canon to Keaton's universe. Get over here! But with the abandonment of the darker, more gritty tone of the first two films, and with the return of the goofy style of comic book movie filmmaking from before, not only did it derail the Batman franchise, but superhero movies as a whole. It wasn't until 2000's X-Men that superhero movies started being taken seriously again. <laughs> Anyways, most fans, for headcanon's sake, don't acknowledge Batman Forever and Batman and Robin as canon to Keaton's Batverse. You could say they exist in a variant timeline that the TVA just hasn't gotten around to pruning yet. Wow. Now, while 1992's Batman Returns was the last time we saw Keaton in the flesh as Batman, it wasn't the last time we saw Keaton depicted as the character. There is a comic called Batman 89 that serves essentially as a third installment in the Keaton trilogy that never was. And we've seen the CWDC universe reference Keaton's Batman as well. Come on. Let's get nuts. Come on, let's get nuts. So let's start with the comic. The villain of this third installment, similar to Batman Forever, is Harvey Dent's Two-Face. But it's not Tommy Lee Jones, it's Billy D. Williams. Hello, what have we here? In the first Keaton Batman film, Billy D. played Harvey Dent. And the comic honors that fact and draws Harvey Dent in the likeness of Billy D. This comic also gives the characters Harvey Dent and Two-Face so much more depth than Batman Forever. <laughs> We get a closer look at the relationship of Bruce and Selina and their eventual breakup. We got to meet a brand new Robin, Drake Winston, a character who was supposed to be in Keaton's third film. We're also introduced to the Keatonverse version of Barbara Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's daughter who became Batgirl. You mean it's not the lady who played her in Batman and Robin? Well, that character wasn't actually Barbara Gordon. She was Barbara Wilson, daughter of Margaret Wilson, who is Alfred's sister. Oh wow, that's kind of stupid and lame and a disgrace to the character. I know, right? And speaking of stupid and lame and a disgrace to its characters, let's talk about the CW. <laughs> What did you say? Now, while it's a shame that we'll likely never see Keaton's scenes from the Batgirl movie, thankfully we'll still be getting a lot of him in The Flash. Set leaks from the Batgirl movie gave us some hints as to what Bruce has been up to all these years, specifically him having had a Robin. R. What's that stand for? Robin. 
Nope, not that Robin. Or the Drake Renston guy? Actually, no, not him either. In this leaked set image from Batgirl, we see a faux brick wall that has a spray-painted Batman and Robin on it. Now, this Robin could be Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, or Tim Drake, but I'm actually thinking that it may be Damian Wayne, Batman's son, and the Robin that we'll be getting in the DCU's Brave and the Bold film. Why do you think it's Damian? Well, because Keaton was playing an older Batman in this film. And if we go by the comics, this would be around the time that he discovers he has a son, Damian, and brings him on as his new Robin. This would be an interesting situation to see Bruce in, considering Damian is the son of Talia al Ghul, the daughter of one of Batman's greatest foes, Ra's al Ghul. Maybe there was a span of years that Bruce and Selina weren't together and Batman had a fling with Talia. And now, years later, Damian shows up, making for an interesting dynamic now that Bruce is back with his true love, Selina Kyle. Or they could have changed things up and had Damian be the son of Bruce and Selina. In the comics, Bruce has to break Damian of his assassin training that he learned as an al Ghul and teach him the ways of the hero. Number one rule being that they don't kill. But you could easily adapt that into a story where Damian Damien is Selena's son. Maybe after Selena and Bruce break up in the Keaton Batman comic, she later found that she was pregnant but never told Bruce until years later. And we all know that Batman and Catwoman have a very different approach to crime fighting. So we could see Bruce try to break Damien of his mother's more ruthless style of crime fighting. Maybe we would have learned that Selena died and that's when Damien was sent to live with his father. Damien could be accompanied by a letter from Selena explaining that he is Bruce's son. And if Bruce were to reluctantly take his son under his wing as his new Robin and then he dies in combat, that would be the type of tragedy that could lead to Bruce hanging up the cow and hiding away in Wayne Manor for the rest of his days. Jeez, man, that got dark. Hey, it's Batman. It's gotta get a little dark. And look, with all that being said, this paint job was meant to look like it's been there for a while. So it could have been any of the Robins, maybe a Dick Grayson from years past who would now be Nightwing. The world will never know. I'm sure it'll get leaked online in a few years. Everything else does. Oh, hello there. Now, in the Super Bowl spot for The Flash, we see Keaton with long gray hair. I think this is a visual cue that he has become a recluse and that he has retired from being Batman, similar to Luke in The Last Jedi or even Christian Bale's Batman in The Dark Knight Rises. We think that when Barry 1 and Barry 2 are in need of some help saving the universe, they'll go to Wayne Manor and find the disheveled and uninterested Batman. Kind of like Professor X and Days of the Future Past. This is a trope that keeps getting repeated, that's right. At first, Batman will be dismissive of the Barry's request for help. He'll be a Batman who's lost everything. His parents, Alfred, Selina, Barbara, Robin, 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 and maybe even his son, Robin. And then we'll get to see Barry play a Ray-type role in The Last Jedi and convince Bruce to come out of retirement and help save the world. Wait a second. Th these heroes come out of retirement to save the day stories. They always end with the hero dying at the end. Obi-Wan, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Logan, Tony Stark, Tom Brady. Tom Brady's not dead. Nor did he save the day for the Buccaneers. <laughs> oh, burn. But yeah, that's a good point. This story trope does usually end with the hero biting the dust. And I think there's a good chance that we'll see Keaton's Batman die in this movie. No! Supposed to go. We'll see him play a major role in helping the Flashes save the world and even the multiverse. And then we'll see him make peace with the demons of his past and the pain that he's been carrying all these years. We could see him thank Barry for saving him, not from death, but from his grief. And that will be a turning point for Barry to let go of his grief for his mother. And as much as I'd like to see Keaton continue to play Batman, fact is, he's 71 years old. We already have Pattons as Batman and James Gunn's new DCU Batman. So this will be a great send off and final swan song for the OG Dark Knight. And from the looks of it, it's going to be nuts. This lights out. Now you want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. Now, for those of you who have watched all the way to the end here, we have another fun fact for you that we wanted to throw in. In Tim Burton's canceled Superman film, The Death of Superman, Michael Keaton's Batman was set to return and give a message to the people of Metropolis on a giant jumbotron, telling them that Superman had died and that he would do all he could to keep them safe. So let us know, what do you think Michael Keaton's Batman's been up to all these years? What dream project would you have liked to have seen him in? Let me know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.